Completing all the four salvage contract location will grant you one of the best armor in the game, the Oceram Artificer. And each contract will give you various rewards in machine parts, HP, and various weapons. The contracts aren't too difficult in themselves. They will have you kill machines for parts or retrieve ancient treasure. The quest can be started just after leaving Baron Light. In the small camp, you will find Kerev and Laran to start the Kerev's Salvage Unlimited quest. The first salvage, named Convoy Ambush, will have you travel not too far southwest. On there, you may be prompt to set traps, and then you will need to rest at the campsite on top of the ledge. After waking up, the convoy should slowly make its way on the right hand side. You can get rid of the borrower first, to make it easier to attack the shell walker. If you can use the trap on the cliff to release the rocks on the shell walker, it should also make a quick case of this one. And all you need to do next is to loot it before returning to Larand. Talking to Laran, he will give you two more contracts to complete and reward you with 40 shards and a short coil. To complete the scavenger contract, you will have to travel north to the charger site just south of Chainscribe. You will have to kill the chargers on site as well as the borrower to make your life easier. But don't loot them just yet. You will need to wait for the scrappers to show up first. Kill them and then loot them. Returning to Laran, it will reward you with 40 shards and one Apex Wild My Heart for this contract. Going east of Barren Light, at the end of the valley, you will find a scrounger site. You can kill them sneakily by hiding in the tall grass and silent strike them to then loot them for the antenna. You can also shoot off the antenna on the back before killing them. Try not to use acid arrows, for example, or explosive, as it may damage the parts. And returning to Laran, you will get 40 shards and a fire crawl, as well as the last contract for this camp. For this one, you will have to try the elusive fine horn, just outside the camp. Finding the traps, you may not be able to inspect it if a random event happens nearby. So all you have to do is get rid of the enemies before coming back to the prince on the riverbank. Examine and then follow the tracks until the location of the fan horn is revealed. They are running pretty fast, so it might be a good idea to override a charger to run after them. All the minion fan drones have straight horns, comparatively to their leader that will show a more complete set of antlers. After looting it, you can return to Laren. It will give you 60 shards and an impact spiked trawl. You will also earn the trophy for completing a set of salvage contracts. The certain salvage camp can be found northeast of Scalding Spear. Talking to Honda, she will give you four different contracts to complete. Just north of the camp is where you will find the first salvage site, where you will see some plow home. Optionally, you can gather six plants sowed by the machines. Just following one, you should see some white flowers blooming in its track. And once you pick six of them, you can go and strike the machines to loot them. Returning to Handa, you will get 200 shards and a draw speed call. Starting the Ancient Relates contract, you will have two locations to visit. The first one is located north of Handa. Using your focus, you can highlight the compartment that you can pry open. All you need to do is go around and loot the compartment until you collected three ancient relics. Going to the southern side, located east of Scalding Spear, you will have a welcome committee of two ravagers to get rid of to be able to search the site in peace. And once again, you just need to pry open the compartment on site until you collected four ancient relics. Once done, you can talk to Enda again, and she will give you 50 shards and two ancient structures. To complete the property retrieval contract, you will have to go northwest of Enda's camp. Arriving at the site, you will find a tribe to highlight with your focus and follow until you come face to face with a snap mouth that you can take down for the parts. 
Then just continue to follow the tracks until you can recover the stolen treasure map from a body. Going south to the newly discovered location, you will see the chest to open on the top floor of the building. To access it, you will need to climb the tower nearby. Once on the platform, just jump and glide to the building rooftop and acquire the relate salvage. Going back to Anda, she will leave you 50 shards and one Apex Rollerback Heart. To acquire the Ravager Cannon, you will once again need to go northwest of the camp. Arriving there, you can scan the machines to align the cannons on top of it. Again, make sure not to use acid or explosive ammo that would damage the parts. After destroying the machine, you can pick up its cannon and bring it back to the drop off point. And returning to Handa, she will give you 50 shards and a component tear crawl. The next contract will have you chase and kill six lengths on, just outside of Enda's camp. You can run after them to ambush them or use a mount to quickly catch up to them. After killing all of them and returning to the camp, you will see that it's under attack. And all you need to do is grab the Ravager cannon and shoot away. Talking to Enda, she will then give you 100 shards and the puncturing bolt blaster. Going south to the Steel Sand is where you will find the third salvage camp. After talking to Rhonda, you can go to the side just north of camp where you will find some bellow bats. You will have to destroy them without damaging the cargo sacks. To do so, you can hide nearby and silent strike one of them. You can finish it with some melee attacks or shooting at its head and legs, avoiding the sacks. You can then load it and return to Rhonda. She will leave you 75 shards and one instant corroding chain scroll. The second contract, Lost Supplies, will have you reach a bristleback site east of Rhonda's camp. To make it easier, you should get rid of all the bristle bags but one to override. Then just mount it and visit the three sites to find the lost supplies. At the northern sites, you will find two borrowers to destroy. Then let your bristle bag run around until it digs up some salvage for you to grab. Going to the center rooms, you will find some Tenax battling. Kill the enemies and the machine and let your bristle back dig up the lost supplies of this location. The southern side is within the ruins of a building. Leaving your bristle back at the bottom, you can reach the upper levels to kill the warriors surrounding you. Then just go down and collect the third salvage before returning to Rhonda. She will reward you with 75 shards and one Apex Bellowback Heart. The next contract, called Missing Day, will have you go northeast of the camp at the edge of the steel sand. There you will find a card to inspect, as well as some scraps and crates. You will then have to kill the borrower that will spawn in the back, and hide in the tall grass until the sun winds come to take it away. Then all you need to do is follow the sun wind to its nest without being detected. After that you will just need to loot the nest and kill the machines that get in your way. Then returning to Rhonda, she will give you 75 shards and one Shell Walker lighting gun. The last contract, Rollerbot Salvage, will lead you sort of the steel sand to recover some parts. You'll be welcomed by a Shell Snapper there, and it won't let you go around in peace, so you'll need to destroy it before going around and gathering the Rollerbot Salvage. They will be scattered around, and you can easily see them with a purple rotation tag marking where they are. And returning to Rhonda, she will reward you with a hundred shards and a sunshot hunter bow. The last salvage temp can be found in the rain trance. Arriving at the location, you will be welcomed by stalkers attacking the camp. They tend to turn invisible and can be difficult to spot. On steel, you can loot them to get the mine launcher, which will incidentally complete one of the contracts for this camp. This random event can also happen at another time when you reach the camp too. Danner will give you 300 shards and a Stormbird Stone Cannon as a reward. The next contract, Crelades and Key, will have you go southwest of the camp, where you will find some tracks to highlight with your focus and follow. 
arrive in at the waterfalls, you will have to kill the machines there, to then examine the body. You will then need to look for the clues scattered around the area. After looking at all of them, grab the disc launcher and start shooting at the machines coming at you from above. On the way to sleigh, you can climb the cliff and recover Warren's key. Bring it back to Danner, you will get 200 shards and one critical 8 chance coil. The reinforced components contract will have you reach the beach far west of the camp. To make it easier, you can reach the top of the cliff by going around the behemoth and climbing up there. All you need to do next is shoot at the behemoth and let the spike snuff reinforce it. You will see a red badge over it and once reinforced, it will be the time to destroy it. If the reinforcement wears off, wait again for the machine to reinforce it before taking it out. Then all you need to do is load the beam up and go back to Danner. It will give you 350 shards and a Vendicator Spike Thrower. The last contract, Underwater Salvage, will have you go for a swim in the bay west of Danner's camp. You can easily swim to the location and then using your focus you can highlight some compartments to pry open and loot while avoiding the machines. You may need the breathing apparatus that you can acquire on a side mission in the still sense. Noting that the last salvage can be found in the rooms. Going back to Danner, the camp might be under attack by some Tenak. And after getting rid of them, it will reward you with 250 shots and one Apex Standard Jar Heart. After completing the four camps contract, you can go back to Thought to Terror, just sort of barren light. And after the story unfolds, you will get the Osoram Artificer. The armor comes with some good resistance stack to start with, and four skill improvement. Leveling it up to its 5 stage will buff all the resistance as well as unlocking 2 more skills and 2 weaves, making it a great armor especially for a melee build. And if you have the appropriate die in plans, you can change its color wave for 25 shards each. I hope that video has been useful and stay tuned for more Horizon guides. And until next time, see ya!